I'm Corinne. I'm Thomas. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the Chill Spot. My name's Drake. And this is Corinne. Good morning. And happy National Tax Day. Woo! Which you probably aren't <laughs> excited about if you've waited this long and you haven't done it. You probably are a little stressed out. Mine's been done and already been received. Well, look at you. Woo! Look at you. So National Tax Day, April 15th, same as every year. Due to National Tax Day, we wanted to, t and I said stre you're probably stressed <laughs> for a reason. If you haven't done it. But tomorrow is National Stress Awareness Day. And this day is used to become aware of how stress can affect your life. And the effects that stress has on your life are not positive effects. They could be very harmful to your body and to your health. So we wanted to talk a little bit about what stress can do to you. And I think we could probably tie in a few ways to not be stressed out. So severe stress could actually cause heart disease, depression, and lower your immunity system. And that makes sense for sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, we have to realize that stress is always going to be there. Yep. We just have to find a way to balance it in our life. And yeah, just... it's to me, it's about, like, refocusing that energy. Mm -hmm. I... Like they say, some people work well under pressure. It's weird because I feel like I do. Like when I get stressed out, I'm like, sometimes I do some of my best work. But then sometimes when I get stressed out, it's like completely opposite and shut down. So you got to find that happy median. Be aware of the stress that you have. But you also have to be aware of how are you going to correct it so it's just not lingering around and causing you... Um, a weakened immune system, depression, which is a huge thing, or heart disease, which is even bigger. Right. And um, I'm glad we're talking about this because we can tie this back to the residents. Too. Yeah, because they're definitely, I mean, a high stress with residents, especially when they're moving, when they relocate. And that's not only from center to center, that's from room to room. Yes. Even. Mm -hmm. There is a percentage, and I'm not going to put a number on it and because I'm not exactly sure, but a high percentage of residents take a major decline after a relocation of any sort. Room to room, building to building, home to building. Mm -hmm. So it is good. I mean, get with your residents, get to know them, talk to them, and be the listening ear. So if they are stressed, they have someone to vent to, and you can reassure them that it will get better. Right, because some will actually stress out if you just move them from their dining table. Yes. Because they're not going to go through that same dining room experience that yep. they're used to. They're used to, a lot of residents are used to routine, and that's good, because I just talked about actual moving. But yeah, like, you sit with Betty every single day, and you have for the last four years, but today, for some odd reason, I'm going to, I'm agency, so I put you at a different table. Right. Well, at the end of the meal, they chart your meal and you only ate 25% compared to your regular 75%. There were some things that took effect in there, took play in there, and that was you not sitting with your regular group, so you're stressed out. Exactly. And that's one of the signs of the depression is the appetite and the weight loss. And then you also have low self-esteem and suicide. So this is, we're talking about now if stress turns into depression these right. would be the side effects right. yeah and that's a scary thought with me i've always wondered with our elderly community and it's a hard topic to talk about but suicidal thoughts are very common with people that are depressed the elderly community is never going to tell you that and they're never going to make you aware because they're private people you have to talk to them and you have to gauge how they're feeling Right, because there's so many family members look up to them as still the head of yes. the head of that family. So that may be, um, I heard the term one time of a quiet suicide. Mm -hmm. So they may fall underneath that category. They don't show no signs or anything, and yeah. then just one day they, you know, they take their life. And then others is irritability. 
Yep. And um, isolation, the residents sitting in the rooms by themselves. And a show back, we talked about volunteering. So that's a good way your volunteers can come in yeah. and coach that resident out of, out of the and room. And even you're going to run into those residents. We look at isolation and we've always looked at it two different ways. Some residents, isolation to us is what is normal to them. So not everyone should be pulled out. Sometimes we need to bring something to, right. which is where one-on-ones come into play. You find out what they like. Mm -hmm. You go to their room, you color with them, you read with them, do something. Some people just get overstimulated in group activities. And a lot of nursing homes have altered to fit those personality types, but there are still some that have not. So if you do volunteer, if you are a direct caregiver and you notice mm -hmm. Sally's never going to do an activity, but she just seems so down. Go do something one-on-one -on -one with her because one-on-one -on -one gets a lot farther with that type of personality for right. sure. Exactly. And then um, loss of energy is a big one. And sleep deprive yep. or their sleep pattern gets messed up. And I can see this coming into play if they're actually moving from one hall to the next because yeah. that structure may be totally, totally different. And then some of the side effects for stress, which I was unaware of, tightening of the jaw. I did not know that. And when we talked about that a little bit this morning, it's it was interesting you said that. I've heard that from my doctor, you know, do you, do you clench your jaw a lot? And it can also cause migraines. So going through social media pages, you know, if you're scrolling down your timeline on Facebook, sometimes things pop out. Well, one thing that I have seen recently, relax your face. And you do, and you, you don't notice that you're sitting there with a super tense face. So that is a sign of stress. It can cause migraines and grinding of your teeth. It's going to cause you tooth issues as well, which are no fun. <laughs> yeah. And I knew about the migraines, but I was unaware of the ringing of the, the ears too. Hmm. I didn't know that would be tied in with that. And then canker sores. You know what? The ringing of the ears makes sense because yeah. stress... High blood pressure, high blood pressure, a, sign, a ringing of the ears could be a symptom of high blood pressure. So it all ties in, actually. Right. And then canker sores, like I mentioned a few seconds yeah. ago, that was that was a, a different one. But I was aware of the weight gain, um, the hair loss, the fatigue, mm -hmm. the back ache, the heart problems, and the brittle nails threw me off too. Yeah, I wonder if that just ties into poor nutrition. Probably. Probably it does. So just um, try some I or the squirrel. I'll use your squirrel today. <laughs> um, if you know of any different ideals to help relieve stress, um, as far as your job setting or with a resident, you know, comment on the chill spot and let us know, and um, we can pass that information For back. For sure. Back there are, and there are several, you know, like mm -hmm. meditating, mm -hmm. writing. A big thing, we find ourselves stressed by not talking about our problems with other people. Mm -hmm. In today's society, everyone thinks they can fix everything themselves. Mm -hmm. Even if you think that, talk to someone. They may have better ideas. I myself struggle with that a lot. Right. Stress relief, the number one thing that I resort to, essential oils. Aromatherapy of some sort, whether that be lotion. I wear an essential oil, oil diffuser bracelet that I can put oils on. You would check with your building, but most buildings are going to be okay with you using that stuff. So as the aromatherapy is not only helping you, but it helps everyone around it right. that can get a whiff of that scent. Essential oils, oil diffusers, lotion even. They make aromatherapy hand sanitizer. So just some different things that you could try. Yeah. Or you can watch CNA TV. Well, of course. Yeah. And <laughs> I like um, the pet therapy that oh, they yeah. have come in, you know, pet the cat or pet the dog. And now they have um, the cats and the dogs that actually bark or purr and their stomach will raise. Oh, like the real life pets. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, well, are, don't all animals do that? Those are, <laughs> <laughs> I get those, you. Yeah. Those are pretty cool. And when you was talking about oils, um, actually, I've seen a few hospice nurse come yep. in and use that. And that seemed to calm them down and yeah. take away their pain a little bit. But don't be afraid to reach out. Um, like Drake said that he battles with this. Sometimes I have it. It's 
it's human. You're only human, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you can't say that you never get stressed because you do get stress. You know, it, it's part of life. And if you don't, you're not doing something right. Well, it's just figuring out the way to, to deal with it. So please reach out to us if we didn't cover something in the segment and leave a comment and let us know and we'll get back to you and or pass the information on. For sure. Yeah. So until next time. Remember that, that. You matter. <laughs>